Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining us today to discuss Shoppers Club financial results for our third quarter. I wish you and your family a very happy new year. As Mamta mentioned, I have Karuna as CFO and my colleagues Jay Prakash and Rohit from Finance. As always, I begin with the retail market update and then we will cover our company's performance, strategic pillars, and conclude with outlook for the year. We had begun the quarter with Pujo, followed by Deepavali in November. I am happy to say that the festive sales were good. We had a 4% like-for-like growth and overall growth of 8%. We had signs of recovery during the festive season, particularly in the premium category. Post Diwali, we have witnessed a seesaw situation in the market. There has been a delay in winter this year. The temperatures were significantly higher than normal, which impacted our winter wear sales. Post Christmas, we have seen a recovery, but it's still not consistent. There are green shoots, but overall the market remains muted. While these challenges continue in demand, our performance has been driven by engagement with our loyal members, our overall customer journey, our shift to premium, and more importantly, growth of non-apparel, including home businesses. I will speak about the performance and then on our strategic pillars going forward. We delivered a sales of rupees 1,484 crores with a 4% growth. As I said earlier, during the festive period, our sales grew by 9% with like-to-like -like sales growth of 4%. Our performance has been driven by brands, beauty and non-apparel business. During the quarter, 14 stores out of our 100 odd stores achieved the ever highest sales. On the non-apparel category, watches and fragrances have clocked their highest quarterly sales. Apparel continues to have a muted growth, particularly in women's western wear and partly in men's wear. Having said this, we had the highest sales in women's Indian wear and in kids wear. Our private brand stock grew by 8%. Our gross margins declined by 70 bips due to one-time impact, which I will speak to you about. Just to recap, our private brand grew by 70% versus pre-COVID last year. While ordering the spring, summer and autumn winter merchandise, we didn't anticipate the slowness as we are experiencing it now. We decided to clean up and provide for the obsolescence of inventory, for, which is worth around close to 9 crores. Due to this, our gross margins were impacted by 60 bips. EBITDA has also been impacted by the cost base which was built for a much larger scale. Our rentals which are largely fixed and that has a negative leverage if the sales are lower. In addition to this, we had investments in marketing and technology which are critical and which we will continue to keep investing in. The new businesses such as SSBT.in and Intune had cost, though Intune had cost to scale level EBITDA, with expenses largely fixed, it had a negative bearing on the overall profitability. On the income side, we did reverse the provision for interest on GST in FI23 for rupees 20 crores. This was included in other income in FI23. While speaking at the investor call and in results which we published, we had stated that. If I talk about the KPI, our ATV grew by 6% versus last year. While I had spoken to all of you last quarter, I had said that premiumization is on the right and we were facing a cashier recovery. There are a number of reports in the recent past which suggest that premium and premium plus goods are outgoing in terms of and outselling in terms of demand. At Shopperstock, we have built our store to cater to premium and premium plus products to our customers. We firmly believe that with the growth of market, our company is poised to reap the benefits as we have also become the preferred partner of choice for a lot of brands. Our IPT, which is an important unit matrix which we drive, grew by a 5% during the festive period. We also observed a surge in the number of items by a customer. Let me speak about the operating costs now. Overall, our costs have increased by 10% versus last year. On a like-to-like -like basis, the cost increases mainly 4%, which is largely inflation-led. Our cost increases are due to the following. Our investments in tech, which will continue for this year and going forward in next year as well, to enhance our customer journey besides investing in cyber security as well. We have opened 19 stores in the last 18 months. We launched Intune two quarters back. We launched SS.Beauty.in again at the beginning of the year. Until the store matures, scalability is built in Intune and conversion increases in SS.Beauty.in, we may have to continue to invest. As I mentioned, 14 of our stores achieved the ever higher sales in this quarter. Of the above eight stores, they launched in FI20 and FI22. I am fairly confident these investments will disproportionately deliver results in the years to come. During the quarter, we opened four large departmental stores, four beauty stores, four Intune stores, and one airport store at T2 Bangalore. 
we spoke in detail about the store opening for this fiscal and the next few years we are in a target to, we are targeting to open 56 stores during the year including 15 departmental stores and 24 interim stores we had opened we have opened state of the art beauty store at t2 bangalore the il last quarter with added beauty services like nail bar hair styling and treatment <coughs> our kpis have improved in the last 11 quarters our three c's framework which talks about customer centricity consistency in growth and capital allocation is firing well in terms of customer centricity centricity ssl has established a customer centric culture with a strong focus on providing exceptional service and creating a seamless shopping experience this has led to increased customer loyalty also our personalization campaigns working on consumer personas have started yielding wonderful results for us consistency in growth we have been consistent in growth over the last 12 quarters indicating stability and predictability in performance we have a well defined strategy that outlines the company's long term goals and the tactics to deliver them flexible enough to adapt to changing market conditions capital allocation our strategic allocation of capital from internal accruals to enhance both the physical and digital capabilities to be long term success continues to focus on let me talk about from operations about our strategic pillars for citizen our success has been our patented customer journey over the years we have added many services to our customers such as personal shoppers makeovers and several other initiatives which are made to engage with them at the highest level we were and are confident about such sustained investments which will add disproportionate growth and success in our business for the quarter ended our loyal customers contributed 78% including 65% repeat contributions our membership grew to 9.7 million and will be touching a 10 million number shortly our premium black and platinum customers contributed to 13% of sales and grew by 18% we had 118 customer events all across all our stores in the quarter making it a memorable shopping experience for our customers this also is a differentiating point which we have versus our other peers now i'm separately covering first season contribution in beauty our first citizen contribution to beauty has been steadily growing the contribution to beauty by the first citizen customers have been 69% a 12% yoi increase so driven by strong 35% increase in the beauty sales overall there has been a 5% growth in the first citizen customers trying beauty as a category for the first time which we call them as a trialist and repeat members shop in beauty category up by 8% now let me talk about private brands and in tune The challenges in private brands continued for the second quarter too, particularly in women's fashion wear and parts of men's wear. I had spoken at the beginning of my speech too. Our sales declined by six percent, and overall contribution was at thirteen percent, and within apparel at nineteen percent. The silver lining is that our women's India wear grew by seven percent during the quarter. So we are aware of the challenges, and we are course correcting, including buying closer to the season, optimizing vendors, and more importantly, streamlining the options to make it more relevant. i am very confident that the corrective measures will show the impact on profitability in the coming fiscal from private brand let me talk about in tune our success story in the last 8 months we have opened 11 stores and i now dwell into the performance and the future plan for the same we had opened four in tune stores during the quarter in addition two stores were delayed due to regulatory approvals out of which we have opened one in january 24 some of the key initiatives being put in place to track customer feedback and shopping experience at intuna we have analyzed the customer behavior basis on the shopping basket that's which are the best performing categories best performing merchandise points stores frequency of purchase and sorted the merchandise in each store we are also reaching out to our customers having exit interviews to understand and analyze the shopping behavior and see how they shop versus the positioning which we had initially chosen off we have engaged promoters immediately after launch of a new store to have the feedback of our new customers do do our through our digital do in the initial stages we are also trying to get the nps scores from our customers and like this there are several initiatives to understand the consumer behavior as we are launching many stores this will help us to improve the kpi such as monthly traffic conversion and more importantly engagement which is also the key to our atv we just to say this all this integrated in the in, in improving business i'm proud to say that within 8 months of operations we have positive habit at the store level do we are aware in the initial stages there will be a learning as we go ahead as we grow we are learning too as we commence the journey the learning curve has been steep we continue to learn and i'm sure our customers will never let us down and our initial response 
and then the initial response to us has been has exceeded all expectations. Now well, let me speak about beauty. Shopperstop invested in premium and luxury beauty at the time beauty was literally non-existent in India. These investments have been yielding good outcome. Before I dwell in detail about beauty, some of the key achievements in the quarter are beauty achieved its highest ever quarterly sales at 262 crores, growing by 10 percent. Overall, beauty contribution increased to 18 percent. Our engagement with the customers were at all-time high with 266,000 makeovers and 138 master classes. We had a fabulous campaign in the last quarter, namely Diwali, just ahead of the festive, Singles Day, and Block Friday. We also had a push exclusive and a party edit in December. All these campaigns yielded excellent results with high efficiency. Our first citizen contribution in beauty increased to 72% with repeat customers of 60%. As I said earlier, we have opened four stores and a large SS beauty store at T2 Bangalore Airport. In our recently launched exclusive website, ssbeauty.in, our followers and engagement rate has been increasing. We have gained followers in YouTube and other social media. During the quarter, we launched 15 plus beauty brands and added 80 SKUs in our private brand, Australia. Our beauty distribution has also achieved its highest ever sale during the quarter, making profits in the first year of operation itself. India's beauty and personal care market is estimated to touch 30 billion by 2027, accounting for about 5% of the global market. The beauty market in India is currently underpenetrated versus other Asian countries. Indian beauty and personal care market is growing at a rate twice as fast as SMCG led brands, signaling the significance of specialized beauty and personal care focused players. With the investments made, I am reasonably confident of bigger milestones which are yet to come in beauty business. Omni. Our Omni channel retail strategy is to improve the customer experience and provide an additional channel for customer purchase, purchase whether it's on mobile, web, or in stores. The availability of multiple purchasing channels lead to an increase in sales and traffic. Our sales share were largely flat in Omni, though the overall trend seems to be that Omni channel is slowing down. Our investments in Omni to co will continue. We are reasonably confident similarly to beauty. Omni will be leading channel in the next few years, and we are fully prepared for that. Let me also talk about Homestop. I briefly spoke about our revival of our Homestop in the last nine months. We have observed improving trends in sales. During the quarter, our home stock contributed to 42 crores to overall sales. You may recall that I joined as a Chief Commercial Officer and CEO for Homestock. With my team, I am devising a new strategy to revamp the business. This will enable to optimize and improve productivity for each store. There are several brands which grew twice as that of last year, and we have also introduced new products which are successful since its launch. As it will reach the scale, I will speak about our future plans on Homestock going forward. From strategic pillars, I will move to capital expenditure, working capital, and cash flow. During the quarter, we opened four large departmental stores, four Intune and four Beauty Doors, and one state-of-the-art beauty store at the Bangalore T2 terminal. Our total investments during the quarter were in CAPEX and deposits for new stores were rupees 51 crores. In the last quarter, we dealt in detail about our investments for the year and the subsequent years. Just to recap, we will be opening 56 stores within this year, out of which 32 have already opened. On the balance, 24 stores, 14 are Intune and 7 are departmental stores. Our working capital, which was negative at Rs. 89 crores at the end of Q2, has reduced further to Rs. 173 crore negative at the end of quarter 3. We reduced Rs. 80 crores in our apparel inventory in private brands in the last 9 months, which I believe is a significant step. Without our inventory in beauty and Intune, the business we are building upon, our inventory in the last 9, last nine months has reduced by Rs. 45 crores. As I look back at quarter three, beauty in tune, home business, the brand business in Indian women wear and private brand has fired really well for us. And we had a good success in that. We have challenges in private brands in men's and women's western wear, which we are aware of, which we are course correcting, and which will refl start reflecting in the coming fiscal. As I'm about to conclude my speech, we will lay our emphasis on our strategic pillars. The first citizen loyalty customers, private brands, in tune, beauty and beauty distribution, store expansions, and omni channel presence. The broad outlook for Q4 will be as following. We'll continue to grow well in non apparel, particularly the beauty business. There are a number of events during the quarter, such as Valentine's Day, which will further help us to acquire new customers. The end of season sales started ahead of time. I expect some impact in Jan and Feb. 
Overall, we are expecting a mid single digit growth in Q4 similar to Q3. I am confident that our investments in new stores will yield disproportionate growth in the years to come. As I said before, we are opening 56 stores this year and we expect to open 100 stores next year. We are excited about the success of Intune. We are building the team to ensure that we sustain this success and resource it strongly. There has been a steady rise in share of wallet across zones. Customers' preference for premium products have increased. We are in the final stages to have some leading international apparel brands in our stores who will be our exclusive partners. This will further enhance our premiation journey and differentiated choice for and differentiated choice for our customer base. I am very optimistic about the growth prospects of Shopper's stock with the right investments we have made on our strategic pillars. I am confident our next year would be on another success story with our strategic pillars, including Intune firing on all cylinders. I will hand it over to the operator and happy to take questions from our participants. I also have with me Biju who is the CEO of our beauty business, and Devan, who is the business head of Intune Business, as the team would be happy to answer any queries around the business. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Participants are also requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may return to the queue for your follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have a couple of questions from my side. Uh, with regards to Intune, what are the franchisee models that you are exploring currently, and could this be done? Could this uh, be done for Shopperstop as well? That's my first question. Uh, good morning, Rahul. Uh, this is Kavi here. Uh, Intune, we are as we mentioned, we are just setting up the, the whole system of Intune in process. Right now, as we set our own stores, we will have a lot of learnings which we need to factor in the way we want to grow the business initially. So right now the focus of the organization is more in terms of uh, putting the company owned stores and taking the learnings from there. As we achieve a certain scale, definitely during FI25 at some point of time, we will be uh, also looking at uh, getting into a franchisee model because it's about throughput of the store, it's about the optimizing of CAPEX, about the working capital. So once we fix these things uh, and when we have a consistent model, I think that's the time when we would like to go to a partner. Well, at the end of the day, it's, it's the it's, it's the thing which we need to commit, right? So I think that's the process we have. In, in case of shoppers, we are not looking at uh, franchisee model as of now. Understood. So my second question is uh, with regards to the revival revival of demand from FY25 onwards that you mentioned in the presentation. Uh, what would be the key drivers of this revival uh, going forward, according to you? So for us, there are two or three things which are which which are very very important, and that's the trends we are seeing. One is that the entire non-apparel piece, whether it's beauty or non-apps, is doing really well. We also foresee that uh, going forward, the premium brands and the premiumization journey will keep on becoming stronger and stronger, and that is the journey which we believe that that particular customer will keep on investing and buying in and in the experiences which 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 she or she gets in the store. So for us, those are the reasons why the revival in demand will happen. Mr. And lastly, sir, on private labels, uh, yes. the contribution mix has been on the lower side for the last few quarters. So are you taking any additional measures to revive that and uh, to improve the sales mix going forward? Could you just share a little bit of what you've been doing on the back end regarding this? Yes, also, if I, as I mentioned, if I look at my private label, there is there are four parts to it. There is a Indian women's wear, which is really firing well and which we keep on pushing as we speak. There is a kit which is doing fairly well. For us, the bigger struggle is in two categories, which is women's western wear, which actually is a market itself is is a little bit of a uh, it's a little bit of a turmoil now. And then we have got men's wear. So what we are trying to do is two things: one, getting the positioning right for our brands in these categories, ensuring that the customer 
gets a differentiated product from us. See, because we are a house of brands, we have the best brand in the business sitting in in that in those four walls and selling those products. So until unless we are able to provide that differentiation, which our Indian wear does beautifully well, we won't be able to get the traction and the kind of ambition which we have for the private label. So the desire is to get get the positioning right, clear up the inventory which which was there. So that's why we have taken those uh, one time hits, clearing of the inventory and working on making the band stronger. As we speak, that lot of that work is happening, uh, Rahul. We should start seeing the results next year. Got it, sir. Thank you for the answers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from India Infoline. Please go ahead. Uh, hi everyone. Good morning, and thanks for taking my question. Firstly, on private brands again, so the this quarter is in a 6% decline, and if you consider that 11 crore of the sales is in tune, it's actually a 11% decline. Uh, you mentioned about the categories of women's western wear and uh, men's wear. So just wanted to understand a little bit more uh, in integrity. So uh, is the uh, decline in women's western wear also happening for you in your non-private uh, brands, uh, or is it something to do with our private brands? Samir, uh, just to clarify, Samir, uh, Intune is not part of private brand. So when we say we have declined, it's a like-to-like -like comparison, and we have not included Intune in that. Got it, sir. Uh, th thanks for that clarification. That's so 189 crore is excluding the 11 crore of Intune. That's right. Absolutely right. And we are not planning to in include Intune as a private brand in the future also. Uh, great, sir. That's that's great for clarity. Uh, just but the question still remains. Yeah. So the question is that, uh, or the answer to the question is that uh, we are seeing the stress in women's Western wear across the across the base, whether it's national brands or private brands. Women's Western wear uh, has been under a little bit of a stress across. What we have also seen, uh, Samir, is that and when we were looking at the personas and we look at customer data in great detail, a lot of the women's Western wear buyers, whether they are private brand buyers or uh, national brand buyers, we gravitated, especially in the last quarter, towards Indian wear. That is a trend we have seen across. So I think that is something uh, which, we, which we are cognizant of. That's an industry phenomena, the sector phenomena. But coming back, I think there's a lot of work which we need to do at our end to ensure that the women's Western wear offering, which we offer as a private brand, becomes stronger. So whether it's uh, putting the brand positioning and, and or putting the right set of merchandise, I think that work is happening, happening for me. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, switching on to Intune, last quarter you had uh, mentioned about uh, the sales per square feet number of 14,000 and store a bit of 10%. Uh, 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 just if you could give a corresponding number for this quarter as well. And secondly, 14 store openings in fourth quarter expected. Do you think there's a large chance of some spilling over happening over to the next year, or you are still good to go to this uh, 14 store editions in this year? Thank you, Samir. This is Devang here. Uh, first, first part of your question, the SPF and the EBITDA we sustained in Q3 over Q2. So I think all the numbers that we said in the last call, they hold true and uh, we are improving on them. Uh, secondly, as far as your uh, question on the 14 more stores in Q3, I think that's absolutely on track. We will definitely end the year with 24 stores. Cool. So lastly, if I can squeeze in. Uh, the LTL growth of 4% during festive, uh, uh, what would be that number during the quarter? Um, uh, and uh, this guidance of mid-single digit LTL that you have shared like in previous quarters, uh, 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 would it require a meaningful pickup in consumer sentiment to reach there, uh, especially on the apparel side? Or are there some company-specific initiatives, including what you have shared in the private brands, uh, 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 that uh, you think uh, can still power, uh, you know, a meaningful recovery in your LTL, uh, or you're just dependent on the overall consumer sentiment picking up for this number to be achieved? Oh, so there are two parts of this. One, uh, I think uh, the festive LTL, as I mentioned, was around 4%. The overall LTL for the quarter was minus 1%. Uh, that is the number which we have. Uh, if I look at the things which we are trying to do, so obviously there is a base effect which is which comes into the play this quarter versus 
the last quarter, same time, which was a little uh, stressful quarter for all the businesses. Having said that, I think uh, we I spoke about the personas and targeting the consumers in a very very personalized way, ensuring that the throughputs come higher. We are trying to. So if you look at our businesses, I think that the the one business where we need to up the game is private brand, and I think that whole piece we are driving. Also, we believe that the there is a lot of momentum which we have in beauty and beauty within shopper stock as well, which we see as a important part of driving business going forward. So while the market condition can be tough, uh, we have charted out whether at the product level or the marketing level or the category level launch of new brands. We will also see launch of some new brands within shopper stock uh, in the coming quarter. So I think there is a lot of work happening on on the merchandise, product, marketing piece uh, to drive the numbers. Uh, Samir, Karuna here, Samir. Uh, when Kavi was concluding the speech, he said that mid single digit growth. That is the overall growth and not LTL. I just want to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, that is for the fourth quarter, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that. Thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks for clarifying. And uh, I would come back in the queue for any follow-ups. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihal Mahesh Jam from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much and good morning, uh, sir. My first question was while you did. Highlight the fact about what could drive the improvement maybe in the coming quarters. Just taking a step back, uh, during Q2, I think there was an expectation that with the spillover of Pujo and also with the festive at that point time, performance was good. That we would see a decent quarter, but now at least on the commentary, even Q4 is not looking good. I'm assuming even based on the data that you're seeing for the first 20 days of Jan. Just to understand in your assessment of consumer sentiments, what is leading to this prolonged and delayed recovery? Where even after festive, is it that the trends did not sustain for the rest of the quarter and even say going into Jan? Yes, so we are seeing. Uh, uh, so Nihal, it's a great question. So we are definitely seeing a, a shift in the consumer spend. People spending more for the travel or experiences rather than only buying for the product. So I think that's a reality that we see at the industry level. Having said that, I think uh, the important thing is, do are we able to engage our customers with experiences, and that's what where we spoke about doing 110 events, or uh, in our commentary we spoke about more than two uh, lakh or 244,000 odd, uh, you know, beauty makeovers. So I think there there are ways in which we can engage with the customer and drive it. Uh, specifically coming to the Q3 performance. We had a inkling of uh, we we the plans which we had was for a four to five percent LTL. I think that's the commentary which we had talked about when we spoke last and we when we met last. During the festive, actually, we were able to continue, uh, play on that piece. But I think December, where winter plays a very very important part as a base, that is uh, that is something which was very very challenging for all of us because winter is a big base in terms of layering, in terms of the ASPs which can grow higher. Having said that, while the market has been soft, when we speak to brands, I think the clarity is that we continue to outperform the market. So if we talk to brands and we see how we, as shoppers, perform as a as a as a chain or the ego, I think in a lot of cases we are hearing that the that the performance of us as a channel is far better uh, going. Also, if I look at, I think another data point, and it's good to share with the team here, that uh, the premium port portfolio in Q3. Uh, grew by six percent, like for like, and we will keep on doubling down and making it as a point of differentiation as a departmental store, which I think is something which is very very unique to shoppers and our customers. And this premiation is being done not only in one category. So you must have seen the number of launches, and I would love Bijut also to answer some part of it on what he is doing on the premium position bit. But uh, talking about beauty pieces or non apps or apparel. I think we are upping up the game there, and I would just ask Bijut to also speak a little bit about what he is doing to drive business. Too far. Yeah, hello, uh, Nihal. Uh, this is Bijut here. Uh, so just to complement what Kavi mentioned, clearly uh, as as a as a destination shopper stop uh, is uh, having some of the most powerful iconic brands, uh, and particularly from a beauty standpoint, uh, we have been able to introduce uh, very powerful brands. Such as uh, Nas and uh, Bath and Body uh, into the ecosystem, and you will continue to see this uh, 
uh, journey. And engagement has been very, very central to our, our uh, uh, customer-specific uh, approach. And that is something we did, uh, and we are doing it with a lot of uh, mastery. We did 266,000 uh, master makeovers and master class in the quarter, which is a significant number. So all these would really help us to continue the premiumization journey, which in turn is going to get us better numbers going forward. So that is helpful. The second question was on the private label, not in tune for the shopper stock format itself. Did we mention that the reduction in inventory was primarily the private labels when you were talking about inventory? And a related question on the private label bit is that if we are going to premiumize our portfolio in terms of the kind of brand we get, does that in a way change our customer profile and naturally put a little in terms of the share of private labels in the future for shopper stock as a format? You want to talk um, Nihal, uh, uh, are you talking about the reduction in inventory or uh, you want to know what, what is it like? I mean, your voice was not clear at the time. I am, I'm so sorry. I was asking that, uh, uh, just to clarify, was the reduction in inventory that you mentioned uh, from March primarily in the private label uh, business? I was not able to get that part. That's right. We have reduced the private label inventory. What we bought for both autumn, winter and spring, summer uh, for uh, this year, we have reduced it close to 75 to 80 crores in Nihal. You're right. And just one final question on private labels was that with the effort of wanting to premiumize, save the kind of brands that we get and assuming the customers that come in also change, is it that incrementally the share of private label naturally gets a little because the customer walking in is more premium and maybe uh, that in a way limits the kind of accretion you could see on the private label side? So, Nihal, it's a great question, but I think the answer lies in the success of our Indian wear. Uh, if private label is done well, one, it is not considered as a label, but it is considered as a brand. If the private brands are done well, we talk about it, we do the same things which a brand needs to be done, we create a, we create a chemistry around it, we, we give a life to it. The moment you start doing that stuff, you will see that the private brands can have a better throughput in, in an environment where you have the best national brand sitting. We have done that in case of Kashish, and I, and, and, and I see there is no reason why we can't replicate it in case of other brands if we position them well and execute them well. So I see totally there is, there is no issue there. Sure, point taken. Uh, I'm done. Thank you so much. I'm sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Singh from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, I don't know. Okay, uh, so thanks for uh, taking up my question. Uh, my first question is on private brands. Uh, when we say that in women western wear and men's wear, we are getting positioning right in this segment. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sir, if you can give more clarity with regards to what exactly do we mean by getting positioning right? Is it getting pricing right? Is it about uh, the customer segment? Is it about narrowing down the categories in women western wear where we are present? So what exactly we are uh, in terms of positioning getting right in these two segments? Okay, That's great question. question. Yeah, great question. Just to give you a sense, uh, and you know, it's a, it's a question where I can actually, we can engage and discuss this over for the next three, four hours. But let me take you through one example so that it gives a, if, if it gives a sense of how, what we are looking and I'm, let me talk about menswear. I think that's something which uh, is, is very natural to talk about. Uh, let's look at when the, when the entire menswear category positioning happened. There used to be part of the business, there used to be a denim part of the business, there used to be a casual part of the business and there used to be a formal part of the business. That's how initially in India menswear brands got structured. Now if you look at us, we have a life and their life genes. But in today's world, if you go and reach out to the customers... Sorry, sir. Can you repeat your last line, please? The voice broke. I'm saying in today's, in today's world, if you will go... So, okay, so let me just go back. If you look at our portfolio, we have got a life genes and a life casual. And I'm taking just one example to show that how, what is the direction of our thinking. Do you actually think that the customers differentiate between life jeans and life casual or, the, or jeans is now part of the casual lifestyle? That's what I was trying to tell Varun that we are trying to 
answer these basic questions and put that whole structure right can we make a casual brand which also has jeans as a part of it so that is one second if it becomes a casual brand which has jeans a part of it what is that brand is that brand for example for sake of better name is it uh, jack and jones is it pepe what is it so i think that is the kind of discussion and work we are doing as we speak on that uh, varun and then what kind of persona who comes to our store gets attracted to this brand so that's why i'm saying the way when these brands are structured versus how the consumers have changed we need to be in line with that and that is the work we are trying to do and when we def define the positioning then we also talk about we don't need to do a 180 days uh, buying cycle we can actually do a 60 days there is a lot of learning which even with a smaller business of intune we have so we don't need to do a 180 days ka buying cycle can we have more frequent drops can we do the freshness can we put the supply chain in a certain way that we actually we actually talk about freshening up the merchandise every 45 days so i think those are the kind of things which you are working on varun it's it's something which is at two levels one is strategic other is operational as we speak that correction is happening and you will see the full impact of it in fall winter uh got it so if i understood it correctly uh, maybe we are trying to uh, do something with regards to the category itself uh, i mean as you mentioned about light jeans and light casual and maybe mixing i mean not Uh, making it more sharp for with regards to definition and uh, maybe not uh, you know, be present into too many categories uh, so is that understanding correct so for example varun when as a customer as a customer what are the usage occasions you want to shop for right and do we have a specific brand to drive only that product usage for those occasions that is the challenge and that is the problem we are solving for so uh, right i understand uh, i mean why i am asking this question is because uh, it has been uh, multiple years since uh, we would have as a company invested uh, money resources uh, time etc to get the private label positioning uh, correct and rightfully uh, like uh, as a analyst i was also observing all the incremental steps that we would have uh, executed to uh, get the strategy part of it right uh, but many a times i would wonder that what exactly we are getting wrong maybe you know since uh, uh, so many quarters years etc uh, so i mean uh, that makes me a little bit more worried with i mean uh, i would think that is is this more of uh, uh, inventory regionalization as a problem or is this because of the choice of maybe uh, not so uh rightful category where maybe brand has a larger role to play compared to a private label uh, so i mean this absence of uh, understanding creates little bit of confusion with regards to uh, uh to to get the uh, you know basically the question itself correct that what exactly are we missing on or what are we trying to fix uh, to get the segment right yeah so varun in our minds we are very clear what we are trying to do for every business and any kind of category if your positioning is right then the next steps becomes so first is the strategy and then is the execution for and i am just giving an example of menswear again as long as your strategy is right and and it's not something which we are talking which is very different from what we have not done in a part of our business for example in our kids wear and especially now indian women's wear those positionings are really really good so they are really good they show in terms of the throughputs i think the same exercise and little bit of sharpening we have to do for menswear and as i said this is something which cannot be well this is something which is a which we can spend a lot of time discussing this point for us the the starting piece is the positioning which we are fixing once that is fixed everything else becomes easier and that's what i am working on uh, varun with my team got it sir and my second question is on intune uh, on the ppt you mentioned 65% full price sale uh, so just wanted to understand that uh, given this is a new format uh, how uh, have how are we thinking about the end of season sale strategy per se uh, with regards to how to discount the product etc discounting window a uh, percent of products that we need to sell on discount compared to fresh so how have we thought about the uss uh, uh, ongoing uh, season uh, that's my second question 
Thank you, Varun. Uh, I think to start with the number of full price sellers that we gave, that gives us a lot of confidence that you know in our first ever season we've beaten our uh, targets on full price sellers. So much so that right now, uh, yeah, right now you will find us to be possibly the only fashion player not on USS. Uh, our products are also not very prone to obsolescence, right? I mean, you will find that you know they are more uh, casual locations. So as of now, we will not go very heavy on USS. We may have some uh, liquidation as is the nature of the business, and everyone needs to. But we don't see the need for a very aggressive USS in Intune as of now. No, sir. My question is on the policy front. That uh, end of season sale, what kind of strategy we want to live with in this format itself? Okay, I mean, I, I mean, it's a little bit long-term question, not related to just what we are doing right now. So, okay, as a policy, there will be some liquidation that will definitely happen, and uh, in the long term, also we are not shying away from USS. Uh, beyond that, I mean, not. Yeah, it's it's a little early for us as a brand to have a very well defined long term strategy, right? I mean, all I can say is that early signs are we don't need to be aggressive, and we will definitely have uh, liquidation, and we will. Uh, Kavi already mentioned this a while back that you know our focus will more be on frequent drops and you know uh, ensuring that there is always freshness on the floor. Uh, I don't think I can be more specific on long term USS strategy at this stage. Okay, sir. Uh, got it. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, kindly limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, rejoin the queue. We would request the participants to keep their questions short so that the management will be able to address them in a proper manner. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Gautam Rati from CWC. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Actually, I had one question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, sir, may we request you to kindly use your handset? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. I I just had one question. Uh, am I audible now? You, you yes. are audible. Go ahead. I just had one question uh, with regards to the the member base, right? Loyalty member base, which we have. So uh, we we have about nine and a half, nine point seven million uh, member base. But uh, last time I remember you 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 mentioned in in a call like last last quarter's call or or before that is about twenty five percent of them are active, right? First of all. Can you help us understand how do you calculate this member base? These are yeah, the whole life, like which is last 20 years base, or is it just like uh, the active ones, 9.7 million? And on on top of that is if if I just calculate 25% uh, member base, which is about two and a half million customers, this would mean that the customers which are are buying are buying four times, but the other customers are not buying at all because you said 78% of the revenue comes from that. Can you just help us understand this a bit better? Okay, hey, so this is the base uh, uh, almost from uh, beginning of the shopper stop. Uh, so that's 9.7. That's that's the base. Uh, the last so the last three years, uh, Gautam, 33% uh, of them have shopped during the last three years. And if we talk only about the last one year, 22% of them have been active and shopped. To give you a sense. Right. So basically. It, it's twenty five percent, thirty three percent. So logically, thirty three percent is 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 the actual number base. And then you were also trying to. You know, Gautam, uh, your voice is not clear, Gautam. We can't. Uh, they, I think there's. Sorry, your thing. voice is muffled. I sorry, I'm sorry. Sense. Maybe if if this is better. Yeah. Yeah. So the only other thing is you you were trying to run programs around you know uh, reactivating this member base which are which are inactive right with this personalized program. Uh, can you help us understand, uh, uh, like, uh, where are we reached on this? Uh, uh, how is it turning out? What what is the kind of contributions we are seeing from those inactive member base? So we are actually as a pilot uh, doing a CLTV model, uh, which we uh, started uh, in in Q3 of this year. As a POC, we have taken two cities, which are Bombay and uh, Delhi. I think the initial response. Uh, has been significant, and what we are trying to do, Gautam, is that going forward, uh, we are deliberating that instead of a regular RFM, can we move into this kind of a model only, which is a CLTV model. So as we speak, 
the programs are running we'll be able to share a more uh because the programs have got a life in terms of you know the cycle which is, which is running so i think maybe in the next call when we meet we'll be able to give you a uh, target versus achievement and where we are on that but i think the whole work is happening on the on the cltv model where we are trying to reactivate this base and we are looking at looking at the base which is not only for the last one year but till the last six years workshop so so if i am not wrong this 9 million customers a lot of them had come through the the city bank shop stop for season a uh, first citizen card right and you know uh, so you know credit card was a very important part of it so how many of those credit cards are all these customers who are there are all active with the credit card or are you looking at at reactivating that strategy again right because that is that was one of the biggest uh, draw of that membership right Ah, uh, you are right, Gautam. I mean, just to give you the numbers, Citibank, uh, when they sold the business to Axis, they had 107,000 members active, and they are continue to remain active. Uh, they do buy between 250 to 300 crores within Shopper Stop, and at the overall credit card level, they still buy at a significantly higher amounts. And these are all private numbers, and I can't share anything beyond that. But to answer your question. the yeah, outcome is 100000 i am reasonably confident that more than two thirds are active uh, with shop stop uh, they are there right now the cards are now shifted to access we are working with access to now um, uh, issue the access bank co co brand card for these customers uh, so out of is, is my understanding right that out of 9 million that is 20 33% who shopped in the last 3 years 25% who shopped in the last one year and only 100000 are coming through that city bank credit card right that's that's the way to think about it absolutely right it may not be exactly 100000 it may be slightly smaller than that but you are right sure and and okay and that is a much bigger uh, ticket spend so that is an option you are trying to explore in each year right now okay that's that's very fair okay. yep one thing Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first first question is with regard to the beauty distribution business. So I see you know we have already achieved seventy seven odd crores sales for now. If you can also highlight what kind of of uh, profitability margins and EBITDA level we are making, and some plans for the same going ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh hello guys uh, the the beauty distribution uh, business has started off uh, quite well uh, uh as you can imagine to start with some powerful brands uh, uh talks about the the potential of the partnership and the confidence that uh, beauty brands globally have in shopper stuff uh and and as we speak uh, our our uh, ebitda margins uh, uh we are already profitable and uh, we are we are looking at uh, looking at uh, decent margins to 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 come through and uh, what we are focus now is to be, bring the best of the expression of the brands for the discerning beauty customers in india so you know we are also disproportionately investing in the experience part and i'm sure uh, uh, you you would start to see significant amount of Uh, representation of our brands in the in the uh, markets to come hey uh, just to answer the question uh, of now we do have a single uh, digit ebitda margins uh, just remember that this is the first year of operation and we also have a decent gross margin so the first year of operation uh, as we move along at uh, Uh, we are reasonably confident we will not only sustain this and probably increase the ebitda margin with the volume that comes along uh, so, so just follow up on this uh, is there a possibility in the future is not now but two years hence to clock a dub, uh, low double digit or high single digit ebitda margins uh, as you scale up uh, so that is one and other thing you know as i mentioned about uh, the the experience at the beauty discerning so what our understanding was that you will be catering Or to the uh, to the the people who are selling these beauty brands uh, uh, across the country. So if if you can answer on both of these aspects, 
Yeah, absolutely. Your, your understanding is absolutely right. Uh, uh, on the first part of it, uh, we will definitely uh, deliver the type of margins that you spoke about. Uh, with regards to the second part of the question, yes, uh, again, uh, we are distributors, so we import the brand and we make the brand available across every retailer in the country. So, so we talk about uh, distribution into Nike, into Sephora, into Tira, into uh, Lifestyle, into Shopper Stop, and and uh, whoever qualifies to uh, represent the brand in the manner that the brand uh, owners uh, deem fit, uh, we will we will be uh, engaging them and uh, making it available across the country uh, for all the customers. And uh, so my next question is with regards to the Intune's uh, bid. Uh, I mean, uh, in tunes, we do understand, you know, that the age per square feet would be uh, somewhere around that 14,000 odd uh, rupees per square feet. Uh, you know, now where we compare to some other player like Julio and all who, who do 20,000 plus rupees per square feet. So as you scale up, do you uh, see uh, you also reaching in that area? Or, you know, given that uh, our price points are at that 450 odd levels, probably we, uh, uh, we could remain in that 15, 16,000 rupees per square feet mark. And also, if if you can guide uh, in terms of the margins that uh, maybe two years, three years down the line, we are looking into this format. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, first of all, I think the SPF numbers that we've clocked right now is only a starting point. If you ask me whether we have the confidence of going to a certain number that's already delivered in the industry, I think I would do better than that in the long term. So I think there is nothing that stops us from doing better. Kavi did mention that it's early days and, you know, we are still learning from our customers all those channels that we spoke of in the initial commentary. We are listening to our customers and we are tailoring our assortment to meet their needs. I'm sure we will do better in SPF in the seasons to come. That was the first point. You mentioned about margins. Uh, I think in the last investor call between Karuna and Kavi, they did mention about the fact that uh, there is a gradual ramp up of margin that we will achieve as we scale. Uh, that narrative still holds true and that's a constant endeavor for us. Uh, where exactly we land, I think uh, once we are more mature in terms of the network, we will come back to you with more tangible numbers. So, and one last 30 seconds. We, uh, I mean, you know, store addition has been really good for us over the past couple of years. We have been adding around 10, 12 uh, departmental stores and, you know, a good number of beauty stores as well. However, if we see the overall top line growth, uh, the top line growth, you know, has been in that mid single digit kind of a number. Uh, so, uh, so where are, so where is the miss exactly, and how do you see this uh, improving ahead? Given that you know we uh, we used to guide uh, a mid single digit kind of an FSG, say seven eight percent kind of a growth from the store openings. Uh, so, so where is the miss in the entire mix uh, of? Uh, see, uh, if you've seen, uh, there is an overall slowdown in the retail industry, which Kavi spoke in detail uh, at the beginning of the conversation. So the LTL itself is flat, and whatever growth we had during the quarter, and whatever growth we expect in Q4 is primarily because of the store additions. Uh, so these are the, I mean, once the uh, retail sales picks up, we um, we are reasonably confident of uh, clocking uh, um, a mid uh, single digit growth for the uh, like to like stores and also um, deliver the uh, other KPIs. Just to inform you, most of the new stores what we have opened is as per the financial feasibility and delivering the ROC what uh, we internally measure. Uh, the, so the, the only question you know was uh, given that you know the store number addition is also pretty good. I mean, if we look uh, on the base of 100 departmental or stores, we are adding around 10 12 stores every year. So that itself is you know 10 percent addition. So I understand in the first year they would be not operating in the full capacity, uh, but in the following years they should also contribute. So the question was more in that context, you know, that is that the uh, the throughput uh, per store is not reaching uh, to the system average right now. And probably once you see the recovery, even that should scale up along with the LTL recovery. So, uh, Gaurav, and let me answer address this question. So, I think there are two parts of it. One is uh, there's obviously an inflation impact, and as you rightly said, the stores in the first year don't uh, don't perform the same way, and the next year stores, as in stores that see the full year, the second full year, obviously has a growth impact. That's one. Secondly, what we have also done, uh, Gaurav, is that the sizes of the stores which we are opening now, 
are very different from the initial bases which we used to have. So you typically look at it as a 25 to 30 k. Uh, we have uh, that's that's the zone in which we are opening stores now. So the earlier size stores, so even if you're open, I'm opening 10 more stores, it doesn't mean 10% growth because the sizing or, or the size at which we are trying to open is not the same. That's the second thing. Third, I think there is a is there is a very strong focus on shift on profitability, uh, open better quality of stores, tighter stores, and I think that's the way we are also changing our our, our store identity as well. So strictly it's not a 10% 10, 10 kind of a thing is what we wanted to say. So typically as Karuna pointed, uh, are doing as per the feasibility and most importantly the ROC which we expect them to do, they are delivering. Uh, sure, thank you for answering all the questions uh, and all the rest. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ali Asghar Shakir from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions on Intune. So, uh, you know, we have uh, quite a uh, you know, strong aggressive target on the store addition, uh, you know, and we will be somewhere about 165 watt store at uh, uh, 26 level. Uh, the current trend rate, uh, you know, should this contribute in my uh, understanding close to about uh, upwards of 1500 crores based on the current, uh, you know, uh, revenue per square feet that we are talking. Uh, this question is coming more from the point of view that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, shopper stock historically, uh, as a company has not, uh, you know, added such an aggressive store. So, you know, what is your perspective in terms of the revenue growth? And also in terms of the opportunity and competition, you know, uh, you know this is now a space where we are seeing all the large uh, retailers quite aggressively uh, growing. So, you know, how will the competition pan out uh, and your sense on the opportunity, you know? That's that's the first question. And I'll just uh, have one more question here is in terms of the merchandise. Uh, some of the players, uh, other players in uh, this value fashion space have uh, some, you know, uh, legacy in terms of a very large portfolio of private labels. Uh, we have typically been a company which is mostly, you know, operated through the third-party brands, except for our own, uh, you know, shopper shop label, which has been a very small contributor. And that too, as you mentioned, in the recent past is, you know, uh, working around the positioning of the product and so on and so forth. So, you know, I mean, uh, what is the capability we have internally built in Intune to, uh, you know, I mean, create that uh, private label merchandise? While I know that your private label doesn't include this, but that capability in terms of design and everything uh, so that we could give, give a unique you know, experience to the customer and, you know, drive business over there. Those are my two questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ali uh, Let me, let me uh, not put a stress on my memory and take the last part of your question first, right? Um, in terms of how I'm coexisting with all the tough competition that exists in the market, I think last investor call we didn't mention about how Intune's positioning is uh, finding a, a sort of a niche in the entire space, right? We are family centric, we are kids first. Our first two quarters have given us very, very strong confidence that the customers are reacting very favorably to our family orientation and our kids orientation, right? We are uh, matching the sharpest price points and we are upping the game on quality. So I think, you know, between these two uh, factors, uh, we have found our space, we are building on that space, and I don't see a reason for uh, us to fight with anyone else in terms of market share. I think the market is very, very uh, sub-penetrated and I think we will all grow. Uh, in tune for sure will uh, is the confidence we all have on the table. So that's the part on uh, competition and how we will grow within the competition, right? Uh, you asked your last question which was on how are we building the capability of delivering private label. I think I'll uh, latch on to one point that Kavi said a while back. Uh, this is not private label. This is a brand and this brand itself is uh, uh, you know, uh, doing its own merchandise. Uh, we also mentioned in one of the investor calls before that the entire pro uh, customer facing team of Intune is separate. And even as we speak, uh, once we've seen the success in the first 10 stores, we are gearing up very strongly in terms of the uh, uh, team structure needed to go on to the next year. I think Kavi did mention that in his uh, ending notes. A, a large part of that is being able to deliver the merchandise that our customers want. I think uh, in the interest of time, I won't be able to go into finer details on how we are doing it. But I think uh, it suffices to say that, you know, come spring, summer 24, we will have freshness every month, right? And uh, given our product sell throughs that I spoke of a while back, I think there's a lot of acceptance on what uh, merchandise we put on the floor. So I think both of these things put together 
uh, we should be doing well in terms of building that merchandise capability. Right? That was the last part of your question. Now I'll jog my memory on the first. Right? Uh, you mentioned about long-term sales growth and you know where we will, uh, where Intune will go. I think we are eight months old. For the time being, for us to comment on a three, four year horizon would be a little premature. Uh, I will echo what Kavi has said in his introductory note that the confidence levels on uh, Intune scaling up faster than uh, the company's expectations are very high. And uh, we think we will keep on upping the game on the numbers quarter on quarter. I'm not even looking at year on year right now. We are too small to uh, look at year on year. I think I'll stay there. Uh, have I missed on something? Can I... Uh, I think that was quite useful in uh, detail. Thank you so much for your answers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Evendis Park. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, sir, full price sales to 65% for Indian. Uh, how should we see this number? Like, uh, in, in our understanding, uh, fast fashion brands uh, uh, should have or, or uh, should have higher number of full price sales too, or, or is this a very competitive number as per your expectation? Okay. Tejas, thank you for the question. I think uh, fashion in itself, 65% uh, full price sales is a good number. I think over the years, anyone who's worked uh, long term in fashion industry will tell you that's kind of a magical number. You know, 65% is where you achieve the balance of profitability and avoiding loss of sales. And the minute you go very high in full price sales, you can be assured that, you know, there is demand which is not being met. Having said that, 65% is a starting point. This was also with the staggered launches of stores that we had with all the early learnings that we will have, right? I mean, in the first season, we will not get all customer expectations right. So, in my mind, 65% is fairly uh, out there at the top, which also echoes in my comment to one of the previous questions. We are not on sale in the first month. I think that resonates with the kind of confidence we have on this number being good, and we will keep building on it. Sure. And the second, uh, just uh, on your uh, observation on consumer behavior, that they are spending more on travel. Now, I'm assuming the people who are spending on travel are essentially our customer base. They must be spending on more luggage, more holiday apparels, more beauty products while we are traveling. So for this cohort, we should be the most relevant brand. So I, I'm just like not able to uh, reconcile that why if the, they, the same cohort is spending somewhere else and associated categories are housed under our brand, why are we not participating in that or not, not uh, kind of reflecting that kind of uh, numbers? So it is... Uh a lot of those categories are actually doing well for us. So beauty, uh, we spoke about fragrance doing well. Non-apparel, we spoke about a non-apparel thing. The handbag, those categories, makeup, Indian wear. So I think a lot of those categories are doing well for us. That's where the industry has struggled and that's what we are seeing across are parts of Western women's wear. And that can also be a function of the quarter from which we are coming out from. And men's wear has also been a little tippet. Uh, yeah. But we are seeing, for example, elsewhere apparel casual doing better, uh, kids and girls doing better, uh, Indian wear doing better, handbags doing So, all of those categories are doing well for us. Yeah. Sure. And, and if I may squeeze in one last, uh, whenever we, so we have data of last many years, uh, whenever we kind of get into such cycle when the consumer sentiment feels for us, Usually, uh, how much time does it take to turn it around? So, literally, if you see, and not it's not only about the about shoppers, but as a as a industry, it is now I think the fourth or fifth quarter when we are seeing a slowdown, right? So, I think we are seeing a completion of that entire cycle. We are quite hopeful that uh, it should uh, it should start picking up from FI25. In fact, uh, a case in point, the festive. I mean, we, we spoke about 4% LTL growth uh, during festive. Actually, if I exclude the match days and the non-match days, and I didn't want it to go into that match, on the non-match days, which were, which was basically all the Sundays, we actually were going with 8% LTL. So, they are, it's like really, really strong. So, I think somewhere when the user location comes in, the demand picks up. We are also seeing that there are a lot of marriages in the coming months. So, hopefully, that should trigger the revival pickup. Uh, that's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you, Tejas. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Shalini Gupta from East India Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. I had two questions. One, you had you had hint, you had spoken about about the reduction in gross margins in the quarter briefly. Can you touch about up, upon that? And secondly, why is the the other income so low? This again, you touched upon. If you can talk about these two. Okay. Hey, thanks, Shalini. That's a great question. I will answer the last question. The other income is lower because. Last year, we had a one-time GST interest reversal, which we have included in other income of approximately 17 crores. And that's the reason, if you exclude the 17 crores, our other income has increased this quarter. That's a one-time income. When we spoke last time, we had qualified that. And when we published the results also, we had qualified that. Coming back to this year, uh, the gross margins are lower because, again, we spoke in detail, we had provided between 9 to 10 crores on private brand obsolescence. That took away almost 60 basis points on the gross margins. In addition to that, we also had higher offers in private brand. That also impacted the overall gross margins. Other than the private brand, our gross margins versus last year have been higher. <coughs> okay, so can you just repeat your... your, your uh Reason why your gross margins were lower, please? Yeah, I, I, I said that we have made 9 to 10 crores provision for obsolescence this quarter on private brand. That almost contributed 63 basis points on the gross margin. Plus, we had higher discounts and offers on private brand for both festive and end of season sales. That also impacted the overall margin because our Realize, gross margin realization in private brand has been lower than last year. Yeah, great. Thank you. That that That's all from me. Thank you. Thanks, Shalini. Bye. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from India Infoline. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks again for giving me the opportunity. On the beauty distribution portion, uh, firstly, out of the total brands on board, are all of them exclusive arrangements with Shopper Stop to distribute in India, or uh, they can be non-exclusive and find other partners also? And uh, specifically on this distribution part, uh, are, do we have any medium-term targets in terms of sales profitability? I'm, I understand you mentioned uh, 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 low, low single digit to high double digit, but uh, any any number there that you can put currently, I think you have clocked a 2 crore EBITDA if I do a console minus standalone. So that's a pretty impressive number, but uh, just going forward, any targets you can share on this? Yeah, absolutely. Let, let me take uh, one by one. Yeah, we do have exclusive distribution as of now on all the products we are distributing in um, Global SS Beauty. And the, the large three products are L'Oreal International Division, which we call LID, Clarence, and NOS, and of course, there are smaller brands also. So, to answer your question, we have an exclusive distribution within India, and just now we just spoke about, like, who are the retailers, how we are distributing, and other things. Second, uh, uh, again, we spoke about the sales and the profitability. During the quarter, we recorded uh, 39 crores, and for the year to date, we recorded 77 crores. And as I said, we are at a single uh, digit uh, uh, EBITDA. Uh, please uh, remember that this is the first year of operation. And in the first year of operation, including all the cost, that is uh, the employee cost, uh, our SO cost and everything put together, we are still uh, profitable. And to answer your last question, do we have a strategy? Yes, we have a strategy. Do we have internally the numbers, what's going to be for the next two, three years? Yes, we do have. And do we have uh, the margins both gross margin and EBITDA margin, of course we have. So we did, uh, we do have all these numbers. Uh, 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 can you share whatever is possible, sir? Uh, no, not right now. I mean, because we are internally, uh, let's, uh, you know pretty well, we don't give guidance for the future years. Yeah, but we did mention to that, right, uh, the global uh, distribution business will have a disproportionate growth uh, next year. Um, I mean, to give a broad number, we should uh, clock anywhere between 300 to 400 crores uh, revenue next year, and we should have a high single-digit uh, EBITDA margin. 
Great, sir. That is that is helpful. Just one more question, if I can squeeze in. So this LTL of minus one percent this quarter, uh, can you see any material difference between, let's say, the LTL of new and recently renovated stores in the system versus rest of the system? Is there anything you can call out? Not maybe the specific to the quarter, but over a period of time, has there been a broad divergence in these two cohorts? So, see, if you look at the at the LTL. Of course, the board obviously the stores which have opened and have not been completely analyzed. So I think those are the ones which uh, which have done better. So if we if X is the is the baseline, the newer stores or have grown by more than five percent of that in terms of LTL. Just to give you a number. And the renovated uh, ones. Yeah. So it 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 it's more or less the trend is very similar. So just to understand this more, uh, if if let's say we were to renovate uh, the whole of the system, uh, uh, let's say over a phase manner in three four years, can that be a decent kicker for LTL going forward? So we are doing that as we speak. Uh, every so we are in the process of firming up the plan for the coming year, uh, and we are looking at renovating close to seven seven to eight stores in the coming year. So I think that process is on. Uh, As we, because what's happening is that as markets mature and you need to also as we are premising, we are getting newer brands. The look and the feel has to become better. So, so that process is on, and for me, we are very, very buoyant on that. And by by 2000, by FI 25, 75 percent of our stores will be the next gen stores which we are working on. 75 percent in by FI 25. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, great, sir. That's all from me. Thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, with that we conclude our question and answer session. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of Shopper Stop Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.